What good contractors are thinking, but will never say to your face. Today on the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show, let's get it started. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, Hey everybody, welcome to the Landlord Coach Daily Show. My name is Mark Dolfini, host of the Landlord Coach Daily Show and Landlord Coach. It's good to see you all. Thank you for joining me today. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me know where you're watching from. I know I've got some friends, um, both of my listeners who are uh, all over the place um, on one on nor the north and south side of Lafayette. Maybe there's other people that are actually watching this. Maybe it might shock me. <laughs> anyway, um, so today... We are talking about good contractors, what good tra contractors are thinking and uh, things that they will never say to your face, especially a good contractor. So keep that in mind. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is what good contractors are thinking, but will never say to your face. Before we get going on that too far, um, I want you to consider going to this download at landlordcoach.com forward slash five mistakes, which is kind of talking uh, hand in glove in terms of the very things that we're talking about today. So again, if you are joining me uh, from places outside of Indiana or even inside Indiana, let me know where you're coming from. I'd love to hear from you. But that is landlordcoach.com forward slash five mistakes for a free download there uh, to help you avoid the most common mistakes in when you're investing in rental properties. So today we're going to be talking about what good contractors are thinking, but will never say to your face. So uh, it kind of goes through that cash flow analysis that I was that that's in that five mistakes download. Um, so you can actually afford to pay for good contractors. So you're not the one doing all the work. Because one of the things that you're gonna understand is that when you're doing the cash flow analysis in your rental, in your cash flow analysis of your rental properties, that every individual line item that you don't budget for in the expense category becomes a job that you create for yourself. Right. So if you don't budget highly enough for for cleaning, guess what? You created a cleaning job for yourself. If you don't budget highly enough for painting, guess what? You create a painting job for yourself for mowing, for leasing, for all those different things, for even the the marketing and the the management. If you don't budget those line items appropriately or highly enough, you just created all those little jobs for yourselves. Right. So um which I get, but the whole point of this is to get into this so you can maybe outsource some of this so you don't have to do all this stuff, okay? But when it comes to getting working with contractors, especially working with good contractors, is something that they're never going to say to your face. So first and foremost, it's obvious, like, when am I going to get paid? Like, that's probably a big one. That is probably the biggest one when, when contractors are thinking, because especially good contractors, they don't want to be chasing money. They're not going to want to do that. And, and it's even more than what's worth or when they're going to get paid is how much of a pain in the ass is this person going to be, <laughs> right? So if there's any contractors out there that are that are understanding what I'm saying, um, they don't want to have to work with someone that's going to be a pain in the ass. Now, if this is a quick in and out job, you know, if you're working with someone that maybe is going to come repair an appliance, it's kind of an in and out, you know, sort of thing, you know, that's a little bit different. But again, they don't want to have to walk in to a place wondering who's going to be paying them, um, you know, in, in, a, in a, particularly in a landlord tenant situation, or if you're a property manager watching this, you know, when you're contacting them, they don't know that the resident who's there is not the one that's going to be paying them. Typically, it's generally going to be the landlord. So it's probably a good idea for you to point this out up front that when you contact them to say, "Hey, yeah, I'm an owner of a rental property, and um, you know, I'm going to be sending you over to you. You schedule with the resident directly, <clears throat> and then um, I will get you paid, right? Or I'll put a credit card on file with you." Um, so that's it, it. Kind of eliminates that thought of who are they supposed to ask. Who are they supposed to leave the bill with? Who are they supposed to give the invoice to at the end? That sort of thing. Um, but you got to understand too, is the bigger the job, the more nervous they're going to get, especially if they've got to start calling in different subcontractors. Let's just say it's a simple, you know, roof job where they're going to have to tear off or they're going to have to order a dumpster. They might have to pull permits in certain parts of, you know, depending on where they're, where they're working. You know, the bigger the job, the more nervous they get, rightfully so. 
because, you know, they've got, they're going to have money and time and expenses and all this stuff outstanding that they're going to get nervous. And, the, and it's your job to make them feel less nervous. And, and when you start acting wishy-washy or not saying exactly what it is that you need, you know, they're going to get nervous. The other thing is that they may not tell you is they don't want to use your tools. They're not going to want to use your ladder. They're not going to want to use your, you know, your tools or whatever it is. They don't want to use your materials, right? Just because you wanted to go out and get airlines points or, you know, get the 2% cash back on your whatever card, you know, they don't want to use your materials. They've got people lined up. They know what materials they, they're going to use. They know where to get the parts that they need. They don't want to use your crap, okay? But they don't really want to say that. They, they might, but they don't want to say that. The other thing is they don't want your help. They stay out of the damn way. <laughs> it reminds me of that Geico commercial of, you know, the, you know, looking underneath and saying, oh, you're using an adjustable spanner wrench. Oh, no, no, you hired him, right? You don't, you don't need to be kibitzing or looking over their shoulder. That is a gigantic pain in the neck, especially for most contractors. They don't want you, you know, they don't want you disengaged. They need you around, but they don't want you, you know, completely up their ass either. There's a, there's a fine line there. Okay. Again, what good contractors are thinking, but will never say to your face. They're also probably thinking that you're going to try to beat them up on price at some point, especially when the job is done, or you're going to nitpick every little thing saying, well, you know, that person came in and left a mess over here. They didn't, they, they tracked all this mud. They trampled the flowers. They did all this other stuff. Like if it's legit, then it's legit that most good contractors will own their mistakes. They will, they will own it and they're not going to try to hide from it. But if they feel like they're going to get beat up along the way, a lot of contractors are really going to be worried about that. There's also, again, I'm talking about good contractors. I'm not talking about all contractors. I'm talking about good ones. And there's some really good ones out there and there's some really not good ones out there and everything in between. The, if you're working with a good contractor, understand this. They are expecting you to ask for certain things. They're going to expect you to ask for proof of insurance. It should not be weird. They are going to expect you to ask for proof of workman's comp. That's not weird and it's pretty standard. They are... Um, what's something else they're going to ask for? Uh, a W-9, right? They should... You should be expecting they're expecting you to ask for a W9 for tax purposes, right? Um, or even especially assigned estimate or contract or something just in terms of the expectations. Now, again, if this is a kind of an in and out sort of job where they're just going to be fixing a thing and then moving on, no big deal. Um, but if it's something where, you know, they're tearing out a floor and putting something new in, there's going to be a level of expectations and, you know, they're going to tear out the floor, haul away the old one, purchase the new one, put, you know, push it, but, you know, uh, install it with this kind of subfloor, blah, 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 blah. Right. It should be very well split, um, spelled out in terms of what the expectations are. Right. Again, good contractors will expect that. <clears throat> um, all high performers are going to expect this. So what I will tell you, what's going to make them nervous pretty quickly is when you don't ask for that sort of stuff. When you don't ask for proof of workman's comp or proof of insurance, um, you know, filling out W-9 forms, signing estimates, you know, these sorts of things when you're not, or you're expecting them to use your materials um, or, you know, your tools or whatever, they're going to get nervous, right? So again, this is about what good contractors are thinking, but won't say to your face. So <clears throat> This, this is really, really important. It's an important distinction that when you are working with high performers, when you're working with a good contractor, they're, they're going to expect most of that stuff. It's your job to make them feel completely at ease so they can do what they're good at and they don't have to worry about doing stuff that they're not good at. Okay. So I've worked with a ton of contractors through my 20 something years in doing this. Um, I think I'm in 21 years now and doing in the rental business. And now, you know, I've, I, one of the main things that, that, that contractors like working with me is because I, I 
I put all that stuff out there up front in terms of what my expectations are, that they do need to fill out all this stuff. They do need to provide all that stuff for me. And I pay them quick. I don't make them wait. I, if they want a credit card right up front, I give them a credit card. If they, you know, the expectation of terms of how quickly they get paid, that's all negotiated up front. And for the most part, I've never really had a whole lot of problems with contractors because they like working for me and they get paid quickly. And I've never, um, you know, if, if there's ever any problems, I like working with professionals because at the end of the day, uh, they'll stand by their work. And this brings me to the very end here, which is before I do the final quote, again, if you're interested in um, learning how to make sure that your properties are cash flowing so you do have enough money coming through um, you know, for your rental properties, go to the, go to landlordcoach.com forward slash five mistakes. Again, that is for the free download. Um, I love this quote. I didn't actually know who said it. And I really wasn't even sure who he was. I to, had to research him a little bit. But if you think hiring a professional is expensive, try hiring amateurs. Red Adair, this is a fun fact. I did not know this, but Red Adair evidently was, um, he was really big in dealing with, uh, he, was a, he was an oil man evidently, and dealt specifically in uh, when, when there was like blowouts from the wells, like how to cap them and that sort of thing. So it was interesting that, that is something that he was known for and obviously was a true professional when it comes to handling blowouts from when uh, when a well would go sideways. So pretty cool. Anyway, that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks again for uh, joining me today. Um, I don't see any comments. Sorry, I'm trying to still figure out this software. But uh, everybody, make sure you place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. And of course, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day. And really cool, before we sign off, Black Friday's coming up. I got a cool Black Friday deal coming for you. So make sure you uh, tune in on Friday and uh, I will be seeing you then. But I'll see you prior to then. Um, I'm not going to be tuning in on, on Thanksgiving, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely see you tomorrow and also have a great rest of your week. Talk, talking, talk to you again soon. Have a great day. Take good care.